Hi! What you're looking at is a typical example of a new tone 8 inch outdoor deluxe patio speaker station. While this basic design was used between 1961 and the end of 2010 and they carry many many different model numbers based on what intercom system it was going to be used with. The most common model numbers that are associated with these are Newtone IS-79s. And IS-79s originally came out in 1974. That model number was used all the way through the end of 2010. So what we have here essentially is a 12 and a half inch aluminum grill. It has all the perforations in the middle. The center part here, roughly this circle where the perforations seem to be kind of dark, is the opening where the speaker cone is mounted behind. There is a blanking panel that goes around the perimeter here where the holes may look lighter to you and that helps block off the extra holes so you don't get water in the wall and that sort of stuff. It always says new tone down here on the bottom. The original styles from 1961 through about 1973, the aluminum grill had a brushed finish and then starting around 1974 they use this silver anodized finish which held up better. Basically what you find when you take one of these off the walls and you flip around it is you find an 8 inch speaker cone. And which speaker cone your station will have depends entirely on what system it's connected to. If you have an early system from 1961 it could be a 45 ohm speaker cone or a 3.2 ohm speaker cone for the mid 60s or starting in 1974 it would be a 25 ohm speaker cone and that was used all the way through the end of 2010. And they're all fairly conventionally styled speaker cones. They're 8 inch diameter. They have a metal frame of one style or another depending on where they were manufactured. You have the magnet in the middle. Most of the magnets are round. Some of the early ones the magnets are square. It doesn't make any difference. It just depends on where they were made and when they were made. The biggest problem with outdoor stations are they're outdoors. Over time, even with as good of a design as this is, eventually the sun and the wind and the rain find its way through the perforations in the grill and the paper cones in the speaker get wet and bugs get in there and eat away at the paper and eventually there won't be anything left and it'll stop working. In the late 1960s, Newtone had an idea. And it was one of those ideas that initially you thought, hey, that's the way to go. But in the long run, it maybe didn't work out. So here we have another example. This is from 1973. This came from a customer's installation. He has a model 2561. So this would be the outdoor speaker station from the original patio station kit, which would be a model 2574. And if we flip it over, we'll have a surprise. Look what we got. It's not a regular speaker cone. It's something weird and different. We have this red plastic frame and we have this white, looks like styrofoam in the face of the frame. And the reason it looks like styrofoam is that that's what it actually is. Starting in the late 1960s, Newtone made a change on their outdoor patio stations to this type of speaker cone. This is easy to see. It's called a polyplanar speaker. This was made by a company called ERA Acoustics and they were in New Jersey. And the reason that Newtone tried using a speaker cone like this was because the styrofoam diaphragm here essentially should never wear out. It doesn't have the same problems that a paper speaker cone does outside which the sun and the wind and the rain will affect and bugs like to eat it. Bugs don't like to eat styrofoam and the sun and the wind and the rain doesn't really have any effect on the styrofoam so much but these types of speaker cones had other problems. This particular speaker cone is called out down here. The name of it is called a Roly Poly and it's a model RP8. And RP8s were available in a variety of different impedances. This one's actually a 16 ohm speaker cone. And it says very clearly here, replace 45 ohm outdoor speaker. What they were telling you was if you had an original 45 ohm deluxe patio speaker station and you couldn't get the 45 ohm speaker cones anymore, you could use this 
as a replacement for it and it would be all right with your system. The system wouldn't care. The biggest problem with these were that the fidelity on these and the amount of volume that they produced was not anywhere near what it was with a more conventional basket and paper cone speaker. The other problem with these, I believe, were that these were a lot more expensive because this would have been a single use item that was only used in the outdoor speaker stations. So if you think about it, if you're building intercom systems and you offer both five inch and eight inch inside stations, all of your eight inch inside stations are gonna use the same speaker cone as what you were using in your outdoor stations. Now you have a speaker cone, which is a single use application. You're not gonna put these into your interior eight inch stations because it would be too expensive. And there's no point to do that because you don't need the weatherproofing that you get with a station like this on an indoor application. So you're buying a part from a different manufacturer that's only used in one, and that makes that part a lot more expensive because you might only be buying you know, 5,000 of these a year or 10,000 of these a year, as opposed to buying 100,000 of the regular speaker cones because they're used in everything. This type of speaker cone was used approximately through the end of 1973 or perhaps into 1974. It's not exactly clear when they changed. It's not actually clear as to when they changed over to try to use these. They weren't a big success and they don't carry a very good reputation with those of us who do this for a living. Of course, it wouldn't be right if we didn't give our little roly-poly RP8 here its day in the sun. So let's go ahead and take this apart and take a look at what happens to them and what the other side looks like. We don't see these too often anymore. This is the first one I've run across probably in the last eight or more years. At this point, most of them have failed and most of them have been replaced. So what actually fails on them? Well, surprisingly enough, it's the voice coils that fail in the transducers, not with the diaphragm itself. And if we take our little roly-poly, unstick it from that, you can see that for the most part, it's intact. It is discolored somewhat, but the discoloration seems to somewhat come off because styrofoam lasts, I think, virtually forever outside. I suppose that uh, the landfill is full of one billion styrofoam coffee cups and the roly-poly will probably join them at some point. The transducer is in the center and I suppose since this one is dead, which it is, we can go ahead and take it apart. No great loss. We take the styrofoam out of the frame here we have the magnet, and on the back of the center of it, here's our voice coil. And the voice coil is glued to the back of the styrofoam. So it's a fairly conventional speaker design. We take the rest of the styrofoam off. There's our two terminals and the wires that connect the terminals to the voice coil. This one, the voice coil is open, and the magnet seems to be glued into the center of the red frame. And it is a very strong frame. It's probably mostly nearly as strong as a metal frame. It has a little bit of flex to it, but not a great deal. It's not flimsy by any means. It's a good rigid frame. And the plastic that they use in the frame seemed to hold up really well. So that's not an issue. This has been outside on the fellow's house on his system was installed in 1973. So that's quite a long time to be exposed to the weather. So they seem to have been a well-made speaker other than the fidelity was not very good. Some people said that the problem with the fidelity was that the styrofoam thickness was too thin and it, if it was thicker, it would have worked better. But I'm not really a speakerologist for designing something like this. So I don't really know that. So that's just a quick look at an unusual a tamp that Newton made to make their outdoor speaker stations work better. It's the ERA Acoustic Corporation Roly Poly Model RP8 from 1973.
if you have one of these and it's failed, it's an easy enough thing to get a proper modern replacement speaker cone and it will attach to the back of the grill and that's not a problem. So you can resurrect it and make it work again. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps it'll be helpful. If it is, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that always helps. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell or on the wheel, put in your email address, and every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.